guys, it's Sam and today I'm doing my December book haul and unboxing. The thing with this month is I am traveling home to see my family in about a week from when this is being filmed. I'm filming this at the like almost beginning of December, like the middle of December. So I'm gonna be filming this probably in multiple parts and I'm not sure like what's gonna go on with this. You'll probably see multiple outfits. So yeah, but I already have some stuff and I just wanna like, I don't wanna film it all in one big fell swoop. So I'm gonna do some stuff now and later. So this is gonna be like a multi-parter, but I'm gonna try to mash all into one video. Hopefully it's not too long. We will see. The first thing I got at the very end of November, so it missed last month's book haul, but that was A Crown of Wishes by Roshni Chakshi. This is the companion to The Star Touched Queen, and this is an arc. It comes out in March of 2017, and I'm so, so very excited about it. So The Star Touched Queen was a Hades Persephone retelling mixed in with some Indian folklore, and it was wonderful. I loved it last year. And this is following that main character's sister, and the couple is supposed to be inspired by Scarlet and Rhett Butler from Gone with the Wind. I'm excited. This early copy was sent to me by the publisher and Roshni. The next thing was a very, very unexpected box. I did not know what this was when I got it because I wasn't expecting anything and it is around the holidays so I was like, oh, maybe some friends sent me some stuff. I don't, I don't know what this is. I don't know what this is. So this is actually a gift from a viewer. They actually asked me for my Amazon wish list last year on my birthday, like 2015, and they said like happy belated birthday in their note and stuff. So when I opened it and I saw that it was a like birthday present slash like gift from somebody. I wanted to open it on camera to get like the reaction and stuff because if somebody is kind of sending me a gift like I want them to be able to kind of experience me opening it you know like I think that's a nice thing. So I'm really excited I want like you know the genuine reaction kind of thing. One thing I did open because Amazon sometimes packages things separately so I didn't know that this was like all connected so I know one of the things with the rest of the stuff I just opened the box and was like ah and set it away. And this gift box was from the wonderful Aza so thank you so so much and I'll start with the first thing which is the one I already opened and that is a little Funko Pop of BB-8. I saw him and I was like, oh my god! Well, him, her, it's a robot. Doesn't have a gender. So I love it so, so much. And it's gonna go right up there with its friends Ray and Poe and it's gonna be so, so cute. So I'm very excited. Oh, I'm so excited. I love BB-8 so much. Tally has a BB-8 sweater because of how much we love BB-8. And she's kind of BB-8 colors because she's like orangey tan and white. So we have like a little BB-8 puppy. And this is what originally stopped me because I saw everything was wrapped. I was like, oh, this is like a serious box that I need to open on camera and unwrap. She said, one of my favorites, hope you like slash love it. And I've never been spoiled with like Amazon wrapping ever. Like my friends and I send each other stuff. We usually don't wrap it. Cause you know, like we're lazy <laughs> and cheap. But like, this is actually pretty nice, Amazon. Like way to go. Oh, it's exciting. This is Deathless by Catherine M. Valente. And this is based on a Russian folklore myth. And it's kind of like Hades Persephone a little bit and like the Death of the Maiden type things. But a lot of people have said that it's really good for people who liked Uprooted and who liked the Grisha trilogy, but wanted Alina to end up kind of going bad and like being with a Darkling a little bit, which is my like alternate universe reality, you know? Like I didn't want that to happen in canon, but I wanted it to happen like in another world. And this is kind of it. And Catherine Valente is like a wonderful writer and like just wonderful and beautiful. And I've heard amazing things about this. And it's all like dark and twisty and wonderful. I am so excited. And I don't want to put it off because it's one of those books that like I could very well put off because I'm like, oh, I'm so nervous. I'm going to love it. But like, what if I don't? So I want to read this soon. And like, mm, this is going to be so dark and like OTP status potentially. Very excited. Man, she knows me extremely well, let me just tell you, because the books that she's chosen so far are like ones I was really, really excited about. So the next book that she got me was Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey. This is the first book in the, I believe it's called The Expanse series. Yes, The Expanse, not a major TV series. So this is a science fiction space opera. I think there's four or five books in the series and I've heard really good things. I've heard that's good for like fans of space operas and Mass Effect and Star Wars and that kind of thing. And I have a few friends that have read it and do enjoy it and recommend it. So I'm excited. Like really excited. I really want to get into sci-fi this year. Like one of my goals is I do like a 15 books I want to read. You know, that video is coming up in the beginning of January and I want to have at least five of those books be science fiction. Like I have to read more science fiction because I always say it and then I never do it and I need more of it. This looks like, look at how great this looks, number one. Like I just love this aesthetic so much. It's all bright and beautiful and it's like a big chunky book so if I don't get to it soon it can be like a tone topple. Oh no it's not. No it's a tone topple. It's like 500. So yes. Oh my god. I'm so excited. Science fiction. More science fiction. I am pumped. I am pumped. This 
seems like a heavy one, and I wasn't expecting that. Ooh! Oh my god! Oh my god! The last thing she got me was The Sculptor by Scott McCloud. This is a very well-loved, well-received, talked-about graphic novel. And it's about a sculptor that makes a deal with death that he only has 200 days to live, but he can sculpt anything with his hands. Like, he can do anything. And it's his, like, tragic story, I'm sure. And I've heard it's, like, really emotional and intense and great. And I've been wanting to get my hands on it for a very, very long time and now I have it. I have like barely read any graphic novels this year because I just haven't been buying them that much, but this is so beautiful and I'm so excited. It's I'm definitely gonna read it next year. And I can probably do it for Tom Topple because it's so big. I'm already making Tom Topple plans for the next round even though like I don't even know when the next round's gonna be. But oh my god, like, ah, uh, Aza, like this is amazing. Totally unexpected. Again, I had forgotten I'd even given her my wishlist link. Like she asked me, like I said, like over a year ago and I totally forgotten about it. Like didn't expect anything, didn't like ask, you know, like it was just, hey, like I really love your channel, can you send me your Amazon wishlist link? And I was like, sure, you know, there's plenty of books on there for like five dollars if that's what you really want to do. This is like overwhelming and thank you so much. It's like a combined, you know, like birthday Christmas present and it means a lot to me that my channel means enough to people that they like would like to get me, someone who they never met, like gifts like that. Like, you know, like that's a really special bond that I feel like a lot of people like don't quite understand. And some people really like kind of turn their nose at a little bit, but I think like obviously no gifts is totally fine and like like I don't need presents from people, obviously. But I think that the fact that someone is willing to do that like speaks a lot to the bond that I hope that I've helped like foster with this channel and this community and stuff and it, it really does mean a lot to me. Like I don't take gifts from like viewers or friends or anybody for granted and that like oh I should expect this because I'm like famous because I'm not number one and it's just like I just really deeply appreciate it because it is so so kind and it's just out of the kindness of people's hearts and like that you know appreciation for like me and what I do and it's just it's I, I can't even think all the words but I hope I'm getting my point across and I just really appreciate it and I love you guys so so much like all of you gifts or no gifts you know you don't have to like buy my love or anything like I just love you guys and it just really means a lot to me especially around this time of year and stuff like it's really it's really special so thank you then we have this big box and it's the winter box from Tor obviously because it says winter is coming but they're kind of to send me their seasonal boxes which is their seasonal offerings and stuff that they're gonna be coming out with in the next you know season how many times do I need to say season in one sentence and I'm really excited this is a full box like they are not playing this is a full box there's a little handwritten note from the publicist that sent these to me, so that's so, so nice to Diana and Lily who packaged up this box and sent this my way. Like, usually you don't get a note from publicists, let me just tell you. Tor is where it's at. The first book is Death's Mistress by Terry Goodkind. Now, I am not super familiar with Goodkind. I know he has a ton of, like, very large epic fantasy series. This is the first book in a new series, but I'm not sure if that's, like, some kind of spin-off or anything, but it sounds like it follows a very deadly assassin type woman who has helped to establish a kingdom and then has to kind of go on her own adventures. Again, I'm not super familiar with the Terry Goodkind, so I don't know if I will jump in with this one or not. It is a badass lady, which makes me happy. I've heard mixed things about Terry Goodkind, like some people love him, some people don't really love him as much, so we will see about this. But if this is up your alley and you like Terry Goodkind, you probably already know this is coming out, honestly. This is released in January. The next book is The Rising by Heather Graham and John Land. Now this is a thriller and I'm not typically a big fan of the thriller genre. This is following two characters who are about to graduate high school and one of them suddenly has an accident and then all these people start dying around him. So I don't know if that's like a supernatural thing or if that's just like a thriller normal thing, but that is what's going on with this. And with this whole dual author perspective, if you're into thrillers, again, not typically a genre that I reach for personally, but here is the, here's what the cover is gonna look like. So it is one of those like who done it, who's hunting them, et cetera, et cetera. Then we have Game of Shadows by Erica Lewis. Now this sounds like a contemporary kind of urban fantasy, but I read the first little part of the blurb and it sounds like it's actually gonna be right at my alley, even though I hadn't previously heard about it or anything. But this is in a world where the Celtic myths and gods and goddesses are real and they fought a war years ago and they were driven out and now like the druids and everything else live in the world but they cloak themselves and that part of the world is called Terra and then there is like a modern day Los Angeles element as well and the main character is a guy that can see ghosts and so he obviously has his world collide with this magical Terra world and he has to go and venture into Terra and all that kind of 
thing. So the fact that this is Celtic is what's really like reaching out to me. If it was anything else, I'd be like, eh, maybe, maybe not, but like Celtic myth. Yeah. And I've heard some really amazing things about these next two books that they sent me. So this is Child of a Hidden Sea and A Daughter of No Nation by A.M. Della Monica. And I've heard wonderful, wonderful things about these. This is the first book and it's following a 24 year old woman who suddenly finds herself in another magical world, kind of similar to the first book that I just talked about a little bit ago. And this seems like it's like pirates and just craziness, obviously, from the aesthetics of these books. I don't like reading synopsis for a lot of these books because I like going into books really blind. Like, I just do. So if I'm not giving the best synopsis, that's why because I don't I don't like knowing things I just want to go in blind like I want to know a little bit about the blurb and that's it so if you're interested in any of these titles I'm talking about definitely go ahead and check them out on like Goodreads and stuff I'll link the titles all down below for you guys I just noticed that the guy also has a ferret so I'm on board. Then we have a signed copy of Vast in the Night by Sarah Porter. I've actually done a review, I believe I've done a review on this one. I read it in October, I believe. It was one of my like creepier reads. It's a very macabre story. It's a young adult and it follows the tale of Vasilis of the Beautiful. It's a retelling and it takes place in New York City, modern day. And it's very like creepy and eccentric and macabre. And I enjoyed it, but it was still a little too weird for me, but I really enjoyed it. So if you like like weird macabre stories, you'd really be into this. This one is already out. It came out in September. Then this one got a little bent in transit, but that is Dragon and Thief by Timothy Zahn. And this is a Hugo Award winning author. And it's a Dragonback novel, it says. So this sounds like it's kind of a mix between science fiction and fantasy. It takes place in a science fiction world and there's a guy that's being accused of being a thief and he lives on another planet. And then he comes in contact with a new companion, which is his dragon-like species. So they're not dragons, but they're dragon-like. So it's kind of of fusing those two things like sci-fi and dragons. And we have a signed copy of Walk Away by Cory Doctorow and that's actually an author that I am familiar with. So this is a science fiction novel following three friends it sounds like and they live in a world in the future where everything basically is 3D printed it sounds like. Like anything can be manufactured by 3D printing. So they are some rich kids that were from these families that like had these companies that 3D printed everything and whatever. But they end up walking away from it. So they're called walkaways. And they end up, the people that walk away end up discovering how to beat death, basically. So there's just war kind of going on between the people who are rich and feel like they're like better and above and the people who did the walkaways and whatever. So that sounds really interesting. And 3D printing, man, it sounds really cool. But is it? Corruption. Hmm. Then we have Martians Abroad by Carrie Vaughn. This is about a girl who wants to be a space pilot and she was born on Mars and her mom decides to send her and her brother to Earth, which is the one place that she like never wants to be because Earth is so boring. But then unexplained coincidences start happening to some of her classmates and she wants to discover what's going on. So she kind of starts a little investigation of her own and things start to kind of ramp up on Earth. This is released in January. Then we have The Last Harvest by Kim Liggett and pretty sure this is horror. So I'm not gonna read the synopsis. If you're into horror, you probably will like this. April Genevieve Tuchulk, who is a young adult, I think she's written other stuff, but young adult author that's done some horror uh, blurb to this. So if you're interested, I'm not going to, I'm not, I mean, the, the very top says I plead the blood. I'm not going to scare myself with this, but horror, if you're into it. Then we have To Catch a Killer by Cheryl Scarborough. This is another thriller. So usually with Tor, because winter is a like slow release period, usually they will split things up into like science fiction, fantasy, and horror. And this month's like everything is grouped together. So usually I wouldn't be getting like the horror and thriller books, but they just have one giant box this month. So that's why I'm getting some of these and I'm like, ooh, thriller skipping because I usually don't get these, but it's just... It's just the one big box. Then we have Last Year by Robert Charles Wilson. This is a near future science fiction story in which people have discovered passages between parallel alternate timelines. So certain things are going to be like the same, but some things are different. You can travel to the past, but it's not necessarily our past. And any kind of like parallel universe jumping, I'm in for. Then we have this and it's wrapped up and it has a Bigfoot scent, pine scent on the front for your car. And this looks like the cover and it is Smells Like Thin Spirit by Randy Henderson. So this is the final installment in the Familia Arcana series. So I'm not going to read the synopsis because I don't know the rest of everything. But it's supposed to be a dark and quirky urban fantasy series that's set in Washington state. Then we have one that's wrapped up in nice pretty gold packaging. This one is beautiful and it is Amber Lowe by Laura Elena Donnelly. And this has a really interesting synopsis. So I encourage you to go and check it out. This follows a master spy in this society and his lover who is an MC at a cabaret and they have to team up with this female tap dancer when the spy's cover gets blown in this society. And from the synopsis, it sounds like there's a lot of like 
political intrigue type stuff, but also like a lot of social commentary on our own society because it's following these two gay males in what sounds like a very homophobic society and they can't be discovered because they're implanted from a different nation and stuff like that. And they have to team up with this cabaret tap dancer, who I'm assuming is this one right here. And it sounds like it's going to do a lot of really wonderful stuff with like politics and like gender and sexuality and stuff. So I have really hoped for this. And like, look at how gorgeous this is. I haven't heard anything about this yet, but hell yeah. The last line of the synopsis says, as the twinkling lights of nightclub marquees yield to the rising flames of a fascist revolution, these three will struggle to survive using whatever means and people necessary. It sounds so good. This is out in February. Woo! That is it for the Tor unboxing. So thank you so much again to Tor for sending me this. Like I said, winter is a slow release month. I've talked about that before with like other publishing houses and stuff. So they kind of put everything in here. So it's not quite as tailored to like my science fiction and fantasy, no horror, ah, stuff. But if you're interested in horror releases and stuff and you just happen to watch me, then definitely check some of those out. And I'm very excited about all the releases I got in here. Some really interesting stuff that I didn't know about. And that's why I love getting these boxes because there's so much stuff I'm introduced to that I never would have heard about from like booktube and blogs and stuff. So now we continue on with my December unboxings and stuff. New outfit, new me. Let's go. So I sent another release from Tor that I'm very, very excited about. This one comes out in February. And it is Miranda and Caliban by Jacqueline Carey. Now Jacqueline Carey is the author of Kushiel's Dart, which I've been a little bit interested in, but I'm not sure if I want to pick it up. Like I'm very like on the fence about it. But then they contacted me about this book and asked if I wanted to read it. And it is a fantasy retelling of Shakespeare's The Tempest. I am not as familiar with The Tempest as I am with other Shakespeare works, but this sounds amazing and I cannot wait to get into this one. I've been hearing some early hype for this and it has me very excited. Then I got a lovely email from a subscriber named Tanya and she has an Etsy shop in which she sells bookish soy candles and she asked if she could send me a box and I said absolutely. I really like like bookish candles. I tend to not burn them because I just like how cute they are and like bookish themed and everything. So I want to try to burn these but I haven't seen even what the scents are or anything yet. So here's my box which you can't see because I don't want you to see shipping information. But here's my box and I will see what these are. So first off they are packaged really well so that's always exciting. They weren't gonna get lost in transit or anything like that. So her store is called Sent Me Places and that is so adorable and I will link everything for her store down below if you guys are interested. So the first one that I'm seeing is Old Library and these are all packaged with like a little cork at the top. Oh that's nice. So this is like a is there a card in here so I can like describe it right? I will check out her shop and link all of the actual scent notes down below if you guys are interested. But I'll tell you how I feel this smells. So it's definitely like that musky like kind of like burnt wood kind of smell with like sort of men's cologne but like definitely like a musky kind of like there might be like a leather hint in there and yeah like that. I really like these kind of like earthy smells like that's very much my thing so this one smells wonderful. Very much like a winter, fall. I can definitely smell like a lot of that like fall, almost like burning leaves, burning wood kind of smell. That's very good and it's very unique. I don't think I have any kind of candle quite like this. Oh my gosh, then we have Dumbledore socks. That's good. That's really clean. So that's kind of like that like clean linen type smell. And there could be like, I'm gonna guess and then all the notes are gonna be down below and you're gonna be like, that doesn't even, that's not even close, but it is that kind of very clean smell. Maybe like some kind of floral note in there. That smells good. For something like that's socks titled, that smells good. Well, there's a little Christmas one, a little Christmas at Hogwarts. It's like balsam and evergreen and stuff. I love balsam and evergreen. I could, I just want to like inhale this and like hold it in my lungs. It's so good. I love this smell. I'm allergic to like pine needles and pine sap and stuff. And so I can't smell like Christmas tree scent in my house. Like I can't have a live Christmas tree, whatever. So I always buy like a ton of balsam candles because I love the smell. Like the way that Christmas tree candles smell, this is it. There's also like, there could be a hint of like a cidery smell in the background too. It's <sighs> delightful. Oh, this is delightful. It's my favorite one. Although they're all amazing. She did a really good job. Like I wasn't sure. I was consciously optimistic about the scent. And these were all really good. And I will try to burn them. Like I said, I'm bad about burning candles. I always forget because I just want to leave them out they are. But this is cute. She also sent me a couple of wax melt things that you put in like the little wax burner. So the first one is Salzburg Cafe. She did say that she has ones that are scents that are based on like cities and stuff. So uh, let me see. Oh, man, she sent me some good ones because these are like scents that I really like. I can't even tell you what exactly this smells like. It's kind of like 
almost like a men's body wash smell, but like more refined than that, you know? <sighs> this one's hard to place. This is like, is there teakwood in here too? I really like teakwood as a smell. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a very like, it's a clean, like male scent almost. But also, is, is Salzburg on the ocean? I don't know. Like, is it could be kind of like that oceany kind of scent. Very fresh. Smells delightful. And the last one we have is the Telltale Lantern. Assuming I'm supposed to be like Telltale Heart, all spoopy and stuff. Ooh, that's that like burnt kind of wood smell again. That very like musky, earthy smell. Definitely like another like kind of fall scent. This is definitely like, this could be like a Halloween kind of scent. So. It's that smell, which I really do like, because you're not supposed to burn leaves around here. People still do, but you're not supposed to. So I like that smell. Kind of like, is there bergamot in here? I like bergamot a lot, too. Like, teakwood, sandalwood, and bergamot like, some of my favorite scents ever. I can just, like, it's, like, burning into my nose. I love it so much. Yeah. This one's hard to place, but it is that, like, that, like, bergamot, I think, smell, which I really like. But yeah, it feels very, very, feels very autumn. It feels very fall. It was very spooky. So thank you so much to Tanya. She also is offering you guys a coupon code. I did not get anything from this code. She's an Etsy shop. This is all like for her, but she wanted to offer you guys a code if you guys want to buy anything. So it's 15% off and it's Sam15 at her Etsy shop. So I will link everything down below. Like I said, these scents are really good. If I didn't like them, I would tell you guys. I'd be like, oh, this one's not really my thing. But like all of these are really good. They're all really delicious. And she has a nice, you know, like mix of like, this could be like a springy scent and these are like more like fall and this, well, this one's kind of springy and this one's Christmas. So she has a lot of scents. Definitely go and check her out if you like like the bookish theme stuff. She has a lot of different things. Really awesome. Thank you so much again, Tanya, for sending these to me. And last but not least, we have this month's Owl Crate box. So as you may or may not know, I am an Owl Crate rep. So I do have a coupon code to, for you to get 15% off your purchase, no matter if that's a gift or if you're getting a year subscription or whatever you're doing, it is 15% off and that code is Tomes. I do not receive any kind of monetary compensation with that code or anything like that. That is just for you guys if you're interested in subscribing to Owl Crate. So I'm excited about this one because I'm excited every month, but... I've heard a lot of really good things about this one. I've been seeing people being like, ah, I'm so excited, and I haven't gotten spoiled yet. So I'm really glad I get to open it now because I don't want to be spoiled. And this month's theme is epic. Here is the little card. It looks like, oh yeah, there's like a ton of people on here. So there's like Narnia, and there's dragons, and there's Khaleesi, and there's like hobbits, and there's Harry Potter stuff. Like everyone's on here. So what does that mean? The first thing I'm seeing is a little vinyl figure. These are the mystery minis and it's a Harry Potter one. So who am I gonna get? I'll open it now because I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna get. It's a little mouse or rat. Is that Scabbers? <laughs> Hope not. It's cute though. I mean, this looks like more of a mouse than a rat because I feel like mice are more small like this, but I guess it does have like the more, well, no, that could be a, is there a mouse in Harry Potter or is it just rat? Is it just Scabbers? Did I get Scabbers? Out of everything, could have gotten a little Hedwig, or any of the cats, or any of the people. But I got Scabbers. I'm gonna pretend it's not Scabbers because he's cute. If it's not Scabbers, and there's a little book pin. This is made by Jane Mount, and that is IdealBookshelf.com. And it's a little Lord of the Rings book pin. That looks super well made too. Like that looks awesome. There is a little Game of Thrones set of four sigil coasters. So these are all like the house. Sigil's House Crests or whatever. So it has Stark, Lannister, Baratheon, and Targaryen, which is really cool. I like Game of Thrones, the show. I'm still not caught up. I'm on halfway through season five, where I've been for like a couple months now. So hopefully I'll catch up over the winter. But that's exciting. We can have this on our little coffee table where we watch Game of Thrones. Man, the, the heavy hitter fandoms are in this box. Like, epic was no joke. And there's a little sticker that says, I'd rather die on an adventure than live standing still, which is from A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. That's a really nice sticker. And that sticker was designed by Miss Fee. And we have a little Narnia greeting card. This is from Suzanne Draws. She's had other stuff featured in their boxes. So it's a little blank greeting card, but that's really cute. The book this month is Of Fire and Stars by Audrey Colthurst, and this is a young adult, I believe it's young adult, story about two princesses who fall in love, and I am really excited about this. I actually did a books for trade, so I got the arc of it, and I just hadn't picked it up yet, but I'm so excited to have the physical copy. I was planning on buying a physical copy anyway. I really wanted to like support the author and everything, and this sounds so good. I've been hearing really good things about it, and I'm very, very excited because ladies falling in love, like I think one of the girls too is 
supposed to be pledged to the other princess's like brother or something and she they end up falling in love like yes I'm so excited look at him oh my gosh oh, I'm so excited I couldn't even guess what it was gonna be for this month so that's awesome and then we have the sneak peek for January's theme and it is classic remix so check that out and every box will include an exclusive item from first edition tea company so it's gonna be like some kind of bookish themed tea what classic retelling is coming on January? I can't even, I can't even, I don't know, I don't know. So that's very exciting and this is a great end of the year box for Owl Crate. Like having every major fandom pop up in here is pretty cool. So good job again as always Owl Crate. And I will leave my coupon code down below for you guys if you want to check out January's box. All right guys, that is it for my December unboxing. Anything that I get for Christmas or anything that I get after this, I will be doing in January's unboxing and haul and stuff because I'm about to leave for the holidays and go home. So I'm not gonna get anything in my mailbox and then whatever I get for Christmas will be at Christmas. So yeah, I'm filming this ahead of time obviously because now Christmas is past when you guys are watching this but I'm filming this uh like the 15th of December so I don't know what's happened yet I don't know what I've gotten we will see so comment down below and let me know if you have read any of these books in this video or if you're excited about any of the books that I show in this video and like let me know your thoughts and since I believe this is going up on New Year's Eve have a very happy new year thank you all for watching and I'll see all you guys soon bye